Okay, good morning, everybody. You got the Bruce and Blonde Keith uh, show on the No Bull Radio Network. And one of the issues that Bruce and I have talked about is the fact that many of you all uh, have lived in an area or living in an area where you're close to the border. And a lot of people concerned about what's really going on with the issue of immigration. One of my friends uh, that I've told you about on this show said not only is there just a big influx of people coming across the border, the majority of them are from Central America, many are from China, some are from Cuba, and you even have a concern with national security about the Middle East. Well, I come from all over. They come from all over. And we're delighted to uh, be joined by uh, a new friend of the program, uh, a sheriff, a member of the National Sheriff's Association for, forever since 2005. Uh, from um, he is uh, uh, Sheriff Andy Louderback, and he's from Jackson County. Sheriff, you're you're down there by Edna, is that right? That's correct. And um, you know, are we off the track on assuming that um, that the local sheriffs are not getting a lot of information from the federal government about what's truly going on with the immigration situation? That can be said. You know, there's several factors that, that are going on here that, uh, and the true reality is in the, the, the federal government, this administration, uh, mainly, has done everything they can to completely gut the immigration system. Amen. And, and not- notably, notably, as far as Texas sheriffs are concerned, the way the federal government handles criminal aliens is especially disturbing to, to those of us in this profession. How do they handle them? Tell us about it. Well, the criminal. Say you got a, a guy that is wanted in Mexico for murder, and he, here he is. Or has committed a crime in the United States, like yeah. we saw with Kate Steinle in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, wh- what's, the, what's the procedure? I mean, how long can you detain someone here? The detainment part is tied to this, this entire program is tied to priority enforcement programs, mm. which is this administration's response to how every person in this com- in this country uh, that's here illegally, if they additionally cre- uh, commit another crime on how they're handled here, and if you commit a local crime, you're here in this country illegally. You're an illegal alien according to federal code, which there is a, that is the federal law. Um, if you commit a, a, a crime here in one of our counties and jailed in the county jail, then the PEP or Priority Enforcement Program comes, comes in, uh, into effect. And that program is, in and of itself is, is so narrow that we are releasing, um, a lot of criminal aliens back into our counties uh, that will, will now live and exist here with a criminal record because they do not meet the narrow definitions that were outlined in the priority enforcement program. And that's that's been a real concern of ours for ever since this occurred, which is January of 15. A couple of quick questions to you, Sheriff. Uh, first of all, what is that limit that you, that narrow limit? And second of all, in Texas, we have 15 cities that are labeled sanctuary cities. How does that play into it? So what is this narrow kind of definition, and how does the sanctuary city affect it? Well, Blanquita, what PEP did, in effect, is is if you commit a crime here in this country, not just Texas, this is nationwide, that this program took when it went into effect in January 15, you have to be convicted of any crime prior to them, before the uh, enforcement or renewal operations of ICE can become involved. So just by doing that, uh, making sure everyone had to be convict- convicted has, uh, has really hampered and, and knocked out the numbers, so to speak, on folks who are, who are, uh, would be subject to deportation or removal from this country for, com- for being here illegally in the first place against federal code. And then committing a crime against persons of property here in, in our state. So, so in other words, that, they could kill somebody afterwards and basically walk. If they're not convicted of any of the actual crimes that are listed as a priority, there's three priorities um, that are named under the priority enforcement program. 
And any of those priorities, and, and, and first off, let's let's be real clear about one thing. All of this affects Texans. All of this affects our national security, every, every piece of it. Because it's not just um, Hispanics or people from Mexico that are coming over. We, we know that there are other, other countries uh, other than, uh, you know, the Mexicans coming over. Uh, we're, we're looking at this from a, from a national security standpoint in that in, in order to secure our borders, um, we recently you know, had a you recently had a situation in El Paso where there was someone from the Middle East that was supposedly tied to a terrorist organization. Am am I correct on that? Maybe you are, man. Well, Maybe it makes are. it just ain't no fun to be a law enforcement officer anymore because you don't have any backing. In this case here, you need a lot of federal backing. That, like he said, this administration just does not offer you the backing to support law enforcement, whether you're the sheriff, the local policeman, or even just the general public in, in general, I guess. Is that what you're saying? There's just no backing of law to help you. Well, it's like the federal yes, government's sir. working at odds with the local guys. Yeah, it's just crazy. But uh, what do you think will happen now? We'll have a new administration come here, maybe, in a couple of years. I mean, not a couple of years, but a half a year. And do uh, you think well, of course, we don't know who's going to be in there, but I think anybody that gets in there would be a chance to get a change. Do you think uh, you'd get, be able to get a change of whoever gets in there who's very obviously going to be running and could possibly be the network area? Thank you, Sheriff.